my oldest daughters, I, I would have to say if there was any one thing I would change would have been not uh, to sacrifice my relationship with them on the altar of success. Tell me about your father. Well, I didn't really know him too well, but uh, he used kind of a multi-talented guy. Uh, ironically, turned out to be a whole lot like him, even though I wasn't around him much. So, um, handsome, good looking, <laughs> no, he uh, tall, you know, talented, could do a lot of different things. Uh, uh, I think he, uh, you know, just probably uh, uh, average, you know, typical guy. What was he like as a father? And once again, I can't really tell you too much. Absentee. Uh, okay. You know, that's how I guess he Well, was. tell me the story now. So what was your, did he leave at your early age? Was it divorce? How did it play out? Yeah. So I guess I was about four and we were living uh, in Texas. Uh, and he was a pastor who had uh, just gotten kicked out of the church for being with another woman who he ultimately ended up leaving my mom for and uh, then very sparingly initially came and visited, you know, once every other weekend and those kind of things. But uh, after probably a few months of that, pretty much moved away. And then that was about the last I heard or saw of him for a long, long time. What kind of impact of not having him there, how do you think it influenced your life? Well, in a positive way, I think it helped me, having been raised by a very strong woman uh, who worked three jobs to support four kids and, uh, you know, had older brothers and sisters, having been being the youngest, I think it, it enabled me to grow up a little faster. Um, it also taught me to be a little more sensitive, a little more kind, a little more gentle, a little more loving. Uh, because I was raised by my mother. So, um, like, uh, I, I may be the kind of guy that'll cry more than Glenn Beck even. So, um, but on the negative side, I think I didn't realize, uh, going, growing up, what an impact it, it really had on me. Looking back now, of course, I can see, uh, I lived a pretty rebellious life because of it. I'm sure there were many wounds and hurts. And of course, my mother, uh, working so much for one, two, being the youngest, uh, allowed me a lot of uh, freedom to get into all kinds of trouble and to do a lot of things that normal kids my age wouldn't do. For example, uh, I cut my first class when I was in first grade. So, you know, there were a lot of things I look back now that were true indicators of having no father figure, no disciplinarian, or a great example of what a man is. And, uh, you know, just kind of uh, look to my older brothers who were only at best four to eight years uh, older than me. So even they uh, weren't men yet, and really as much as they probably tried, didn't uh, know what it meant to be a good man and, and therefore uh, give me really any kind of good example to follow. From what you know about your father, what's the one word you would use to describe him? Well, I guess I'm pretty objective at things or just in general in life. So I always kind of like to look at the positive and the negative of things. And so I'll give you two words uh, on the positive side. I'd have to say talented um, and on the negative side, selfish. That's good. Um, from as much as you can remember, what are the good things that you learned from your father? How not to be a father? Uh, short of that, I, I can't really say because, I mean, from the time I was four till maybe when I was 35 years old, there really wasn't any kind of relationship with him um, other than occasional birthday card or, you know, things like that. Uh, later in life, he got saved, um, really saved, not just head saved, but heart saved. And so at that point in time, God started to do a work. <clears throat> in his heart, his life, and mine as well, having been saved a few years before that. Um, so then God started to reconcile and restore that relationship. Um, so during my childhood, I really, I think the only thing I did learn is what I didn't want to be, and that was an absentee father. What are, are there any things, again, kind of looking back, similar question, what are the bad things you learned from your father? Um, 
just once again, I think of anything, um, how to run away, you know, from your responsibilities, from your commitments and so on. Uh, I thank God that I did have an older brother who early on in his life, in his high school life, came to know the Lord uh, through Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And so that change that took place in his life really helped me at a younger age uh, to have what I probably wouldn't have had otherwise, at least somewhat of an example of what honor, integrity, and character really were. And uh, so that kind of helped me see growing up, looking back, maybe not at the time when I was a kid, but now looking back at uh, you know, what it really means to not only be a man, uh, but to be a father. I think anybody can have a kid. Uh, the question is, can you be a father? Can you really be a father to him, a mentor, a teacher, a loving, kind, gentle instructor uh, who's stern, firm, but fair at the same time? Did anybody besides your brother ever step in there and become a father figure to you? My mom did something I think a lot of women do especially in her circumstance, you're broke, your husband leaves you, he doesn't pay child support, you know, she goes to work, she starts working three jobs, still in over her head, uh, so she ends up getting married uh, to another guy uh, who ultimately turned out to be an alcoholic. So uh, in the short stint, uh, in my relationship with him was pretty much non-existent too because I was always afraid of him because he'd come home drunk and, you know, kind of hooting and hollering and you know, just, just crazy kind of stuff. So I'd always kind of just disappear in my room and never get in his way kind of thing. So uh, I, I don't really have, uh, you know, a frame of reference other than my brother, maybe a, a coach or two along the way as I got older and played sports and, and things like that. I think my fourth grade school teacher um, really was impactful at a certain point in time in my life. I still remember his name. So I think, you know, at that point in time in my life, I must have been hungry for something or missing something that I saw in him uh, that uh, he treated me well and he taught me some things. But as much as any school teacher can do in the fourth grade. What do you wish your dad would have told you but didn't? You know, it's kind of a double-edged sword, really, because... You know, at that point in time, I think every kid would want to hear, you know, I love you would be something you'd long to hear from your dad or that I, I want to be here or I want to get back together with your mom or, you know, all those kind of thoughts, I think, go through your head. But for me, I think uh, I, I, I can't really say for sure, honestly, what I would have wanted to hear from him other than the norm uh, that I think all kids would hear because I didn't have any really relationship with him. I didn't hear anything uh, from him. So, um, I was kind of different. I think I still am today in a lot of ways that, uh, for whatever reason, God's blessed me with the ability to forgive. And so I think early on, I just kind of got used to the idea. Okay. He's not going to be around. He's not going to be here and just went about doing what I wanted to do and living my life and, and so on. Of course, once again, looking back now, I can see there's many things I missed, um, by not having my father there. And, uh, so I, I guess if I, if I had to hone it down, uh, like I just have to stick with something basic like, I, you know, I love you or um, I'm sorry I left. It might have been a, a, a good thing. How about the, uh, this is the one that I always struggled with, is just, just someone saying, an adult man saying, I'm proud of you. Yeah, that would probably be a, a, a big one. I'm proud of you. I know I definitely sought out uh, recognition for many years of my life. So now that you say that, I, I guess looking back, that probably wasn't something I just wanted to hear, but something I needed to feel, something I needed to know. Um, my mom was just filled with compliments and I could do no wrong, as all mothers probably are. But uh, to hear it from my dad, uh, I'm sure I longed for that because growing up, I uh, was known as a kid, for example, in baseball as the fisherman. Um, because I, uh, not because I like to fish, but because I fished for compliments, I would constantly, anytime I'd get a hit or make a great play, I'd like, Hey, did you see that play? Did you? So I was longing for that, um, you know, recognition. And I think that probably stemmed from the fact that I never had a father to tell me how he was proud of me. That's good. Is there something that you wish your dad would have showed you, but didn't? 
all the things that any kid yearns a father to teach him, you know, whatever you're into, whatever you're interested in, uh, for him to come alongside and take an interest in the things you're interested in and, and then to uh, give you some helpful hints or tips, some advice uh, along the ways. I think in particular it would have been great as you get into that like in girls stage that uh, you'd had uh, you know a father to say hey watch out for this kind and you know those are the kind you're looking for and so on and so forth. Is there something that your dad did with you or your siblings that you will never do with your children? Pawn them off on someone else. I, I never forget the times that he finally did start to come around again and ask for time with us, uh, maybe going up to visit him uh, a couple weeks in the summer, once or twice, um, but then not being there and just pawning us off on uh, you know, our stepmom, who at that time we felt like was the step monster, uh, the evil, wicked stepmother from the West. So ironically, now I have a better relationship with her than I do with him. But uh, it's uh, funny when you're young, how no one, especially in those circumstances, will ever take the place of your real mother. And to be thrust into a situation where uh, you're homesick, kind of like a kid at camp, you know, you don't want to really be there. You're only going there because your mom told you you had to go there. And then to be kind of turned over to what in your mind is the wicked, you know, wicked stepmother from the West. Um, I think it, 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 it really resonates that we weren't important, that uh, I'd been better off just staying back uh, at home with my mom and not going with him at all. Kind of on the flip side of that, was there anything that your dad did with you or your siblings that you have done or will do with your kids? Yeah, I'm sure there's lots of things. Um, I can't really recall any no, that's off fine. the top of my that's head. Fine. No, no, no. But I would have to probably say, you know, if any one thing, I think I learned more from his mistakes than I did from his example. You know, just once again, learning what not to do more so than what to do. And uh, I know my dad's probably going to watch this and think I'm being so unfair, but uh, that's, the, you know, just the God's honest truth of it. I, I think I've learned far more from him on what not to do and uh, many, many things that, that I won't do with my kids. I could go on and on and on on yeah. that issue, but what I will do with my kids, um, I really can't recall other than maybe going to the zoo or going fishing once, you know, I would go do with my kids. Yeah. What was the most memorable experience with your dad? Do you have one? I would have to say throughout the course of my life or as I was a, as a kid, just any time in my life. Anytime. Promise Keepers here in Dallas, Texas, when he got saved. I'll never forget, uh, you know, having been saved for about a year or two myself at that time and had been praying knowing that my father, knowing what I knew it was to be a Christian at that time, that something had inside me had changed. And uh, that if any man be in Christ, he was a new creation. That certainly was the case for me. God had really just, you know, did a 180 in my heart. And so did my life. And, you know, after he changed my heart, my thoughts changed, my actions changed, my words changed, my priorities changed, my relationships changed. And instead of having anger uh, towards my father and not wanting really anything to do with him, I began to pray for him to uh, get saved. So uh, I think uh, that time at Promise Keepers when God really did get a hold of his heart and uh, and it was evident because when they asked people to come forward and make a decision for Christ, he was so broken and weeping so hard that he couldn't even get out of his chair and, uh, and just sat there with his hands in his head. And I must admit at a selfish level, uh, which maybe I'm a bit ashamed of still to this day. Although I had been praying for his salvation when I saw him broken, when I saw him weep, not, not only did I rejoice just as all of heaven rejoices, but there was a small part of me that felt vindicated in some way, you know, that felt like, okay, now he's feeling the pain that I felt all those years for having abandoned us. Yeah, that's good. That's real too. Is there... Speaking of 
when you were a ch when you were a child, is there a time that was your most ex most memorable experience with your dad as a child? Is there anything that stands out? Fishing, caught a couple of my first fish in the Colorado River. Uh, he rented a cabin uh, for us to. Uh, it was just me actually. Um, I think it was the only second time during the summer uh, that I had ever gone and spent any time with him. Must have been probably ten years old or so. And so we caught some trout in a stream. And I just thought that was great, you know, fishing with my dad and um, catching that first fish and learning how to do it and you know, those kind of things. That uh, was a good day. As a father, if there's one thing that you wish you could do over with your kids, what would that be? Well, with, with me and my kids, there's kind of like the before and after. You know, there's the BC and then the AC, you know, the before Christ, the after Christ. So my oldest daughters, I would have to say if there was any one thing I would change would be not to sacrifice my relationship with them on the altar of success. Um, being as driven as I was probably a lot to do with the fact that I didn't have a father, that I was determined to have everyone notice me and look at me and tell me how great I was and how successful I was. So I was, you know, steadfast and determined on making something out of my life, uh, trying to defy the odds, having never graduated high school either. So, uh, you know, to then go on to be successful, I think, uh, at whatever cost was important to me. And, and so I think, look back now, and um, prior to knowing Christ, those things didn't bother me. I didn't realize how much I was sacrificing. Uh, I might have been there, might have paid. Uh, you know, child support and, you know, those kind of things and visited them, having, you know, went through that myself as a kid, uh, I was determined not to make those mistakes uh, that my father had made, although I was finding myself going down that same path, having been divorced. But then that was a real wake up call for me. And I said, well, the very least I'm going to, you know, pay my child support. I'm going to show up. I'm going to spend time with them. I'll never miss a summer. I'll never miss a birthday. I'll never, you know, and which I didn't. Uh, but it still wasn't enough. You know, um, you can give them all the money you want and make sure they have all the toys and things they want. Uh, but there's no substitute for time. So, but after Christ, I'd say, I don't know what I would change. It's, it's been such a wonderful, amazing, remarkable difference in my life since I met Christ, uh, the way he guides me, instructs me encourages me the way his word uh, trains me and speaks to me. Um, I'm sure we all have regrets. We all look back and say, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Uh, but in, by and large, I think the relationship I have with my kids now is, is awesome. It's wonderful. We got opportunities to go and do things together, um, to spend time together, uh, even if it's just playing a board game as a family um, or just sitting around watching one of their favorite, uh, you know, cartoons or something, uh, whatever it is, I, I just really enjoy the time with them. I think if I had to do any one thing different now that I wouldn't have, have done uh, after Christ, it probably would be even uh, taking more of a genuine interest in what they like, uh, not just trying to teach them and tell them and share with them my experiences and what I believe is good or something that they'll enjoy. But really, whether I want to or not, uh, learning how to play that video game uh, that I know nothing about or uh, putting those Legos together that uh, after a while becomes pretty redundant. Uh, whatever it is, just really engaging them and in, 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 um, connecting with them at their level where they are and not uh, trying to get them to always see things my way. If you could say one thing to your father right now, what what would that be as as it results to, I mean, obviously you guys have, I didn't realize he was still alive. Yeah, uh, he's like 70 something now. I would, I would just say, I love you and don't forget you're forgiven. You know, I forgave you, God forgave you. So uh, just move on. When you hear the word dad, or father, what thoughts come to mind? Um, on a personal level, for me, 
uh, accountability, responsibility, integrity, consistency. I mean, there's so many adjectives that describe a father, uh, a consistency in love and in support and in discipline and so on. Um, but then as a kid, once again, I think the, the word would be absentee or even maybe better put, I don't know. I just don't know. That's good. How do you think that the fact that your dad wasn't around, how has that shaped and formed the father that you are now? I think when I'm more cognizant of what the Bible would call a generational curse. Now, I don't subscribe to the Old Testament meaning of that generational curse because I believe Christ made all things new. That Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having been made the curse for us, the Bible says. Um, but I do know with no equivocation that the sins of the father will be inherited by their children in, in so much as if a father is an alcoholic, a lot of chances are their kids will grow up to be alcoholics. If the father uh, is overly uh, involved in business and not in family, then they'll go on to do the same thing. So I think in that respect, because we do emulate our parents, uh, I don't know a person who will be watching this who couldn't honestly relate to the old I'm never going to say that when I'm a dad, or I'm never going to do that when I'm a parent. And then lo and behold, you find yourself saying or doing those exact same things. So I do believe we inherit certain traits or characteristics uh, or habits from our parents, whether we want to or not. I think uh, for me, it just the awareness of what it means to be a good father, more so than anything, uh, I think it's time. Just, just investing that time. The kids really uh, don't need your money. They don't need the toys. They don't need the latest gadgets and gimmicks. They don't need the big screen TV in their room. What they need is you. They need you. And there's no substitute for that. Finish this sentence and repeat the sentence and then finish it. My father was. My father was God. Okay. Same thing with this one. My father did not. My father did not honor his commitment. Last question. If you had a friend who was going to be a father for the first time, what advice would you give him? I am third. I would just tell him I am third. I would say, make sure God, his laws, his principles, his word comes first, that his wife, his kids come second, and then he comes third. Um, it's a hard thing for men to grasp because they're used to being babied. And especially if they've been romantically involved with their wife for some time before the babies come, uh, they grow accustomed to that. They like that attention. They like that extra uh, effort that their wives are able to give them to make them feel like no one else on this earth can make them feel. Um, and when the kids come, mom's attention, because she does become a mom, uh, be, gets split, if not completely obliterated, and uh, the whole relationship changes. And so I think they have to, to be mature enough at that point to realize that love is, uh, is a verb. It, it, it's not uh, an adjective. It's not a term used to describe how you feel. It's what you do. And if you truly do love your wife and, and you love your child, then you'll put yourself in that perspective. You'll be like Christ. You'll come to serve and not to be served. Or in short, I would say be her hero or be their hero. And then they'll be your biggest fan. One last question. And, and this plays into what it is that played out in my life. And I know it played out in your life. Uh, at what point in your life did you come to find that forgiveness for your dad? And how did that play out? I think once I got saved, I didn't realize how many wounds were there. I didn't realize how many um, times I had pent up frustration with some of the things that he never said or things that he never did. Uh, the desire to have him there when he wasn't there and so on. Uh, maybe the uh, frustration or anger of, that I had to go through some of the things that I would have never went through had my dad been there for me. Uh, so I think it, 
it, it impacts a person in a way that, uh, you know, you probably can't gauge while you're in the thick of it. But uh, looking back, you can see so many times where uh, you say, wow, you know, if this was this, then that would have been that way. But, but you can't. You can't change the past. You can't change those things. So you just try to uh, forgive the best you can at that time. But once I got saved, then, you know, something new was inside of me. Of course, it was the Lord Jesus. And part of the things he does, one of the hallmarks of, a, of somebody who's truly had an encounter with Christ is he starts to change their heart. And part of that process for me was to, to forgive and to learn how to forgive and what I needed to forgive him of. And so for me, it was, it was kind of a pretty rapid process because God had already given me a pretty gracious forgiving heart, but he brought to the surface um, many of the wounds, many of the issues, once again, those pent up frustrations that I didn't even know were there. And so he uh, liberated me from those in the, in the classic sense of the word. I mean, he lifted off the burden, uh, the yoke, if you will, of that burden that I had placed on myself and gave me a heart to not only forgive, but to once again, desire a relationship uh, with my father, knowing he wasn't at that point in time in his life yet, uh, then to be able to even start to pray for. So it really, I think if anything, brought to life uh, my post-salvation love for my father and willingness to not only forgive, but to start to pray for him. The scripture that says to love your enemy and to pray for those who persecute you. So uh, it was just more proof positive of, of Jesus Christ being alive and well and working in the hearts and lives of men and women all around the world. He gave me that ability to forgive and uh, pretty quickly was able to do, to do that. Um, so, it, but it was a process. It wasn't one moment to where it, it's like the scales fall, fell off. It was, it was a little bit of a journey. Right. I think uh, probably still some of that there even now. Um, definitely not to the degree there was, but I'm sure as time goes forward, I'll find myself in a cer certain circumstance or situation uh, that'll remind me and it'll bring up maybe one of those wounds that I thought had healed or that I never even knew about. And uh, it'll give me an opportunity to deal with it at that time and to lay it at the foot of that cross and let the, let the Lord have it because he's going to deal with it a whole lot better than I will. Watch the Father Effect movie for free on YouTube.